Hello everybody and welcome back to more Terraria. We are here doing, picking up really right where we left off with some dungeon exploration. Uh, Muramasa is a sword we just picked up and I'm using it just to show it off, but I'm going to die really quickly if I keep using it. One of the things that's kind of annoying about Terraria sometimes is there's a lot of things that you pick up, a lot of weapons you get where they almost feel like they should have been in the in the area be right before where you are because they're just a little bit too too weak for where you are. And the Muramasa is a fine sword. The issue with it is the issue, ooh, spiky guy. The issue with the Muramasa is that it doesn't have very much knockback. So enemies like we just barely stunlock that guy and he should be much easier to stunlock. Enemies are just gonna be really hard to to stunlock compared to like the water bolt. Also just just a Terraria tip, not that you guys really need to be told this because you'll figure it out on your own very quickly. If you ever have a choice in Terraria between two two weapons and you're not really sure which one to use, uh, go with the one that makes light because light is awesome. Even with the light source that we have, I still like having having a weapon that, that casts some light. In fact, at some point I probably will, even though I'm not a magic user with this character, I probably will make a a diamond staff just so that I can just so that I can see. Yeah, we're just going through the world today. Killing some stuff. And I'll take this lantern because it's pretty. We we are right, so we're now Shia Key. I don't. I thought I saw a book down there. I guess not. I never. I I, I actually know exactly what the art for uh, the water boat looks like, but I still I still miss them, and it's still just easier to hover the mouse over and see if I see that book icon. You do have to be close to it to do that though. Like you have to be able to, within the distance where you could mine it. Okay, so there's, there's the, there's the water bolt art. It's kind of like a blue and gold, two books together. Nimble water bolt, I don't think is as good as godly. I got a golden key, so I'm gonna go back to that chest. And I'm going to space out for a second as I make my way down in the chest. Uh, Aqua Scepter. Actually, now this is an interesting weapon because... Alright. Sorry, get, bear with me for one second. We don't need the Shadow Key right now. Don't need that anymore. Don't need you anymore. The Aqua Scepter is really interesting, not because it's good. I think it runs out of mana way too fast to really be like super useful, but it's interesting because it's got a good amount of knockback, so it can, I guess it does, I thought it did. But why I like this weapon is because it gets right in the face of enemies in a really interesting way. like. The arc is so easy. It's so easy to just remember what you're doing with this weapon. I don't see any... See this, the the um, thing that looks like the, the water bolt but is like two blue books instead of blue and yellow always throws me off. Uh, kill you. Yeah, but it's, it's it's amazing how important um, 
how important knockback is because like we just picked up a really cool looking sword and I just you know we're not using it because knockback is so huge like look at that we just destroyed those guys we destroyed them and I'd really like a key I'd like a key very soon please um yeah, let's get out the mega sh the the mini shark. Um, when you're when you've got an enemy shooting at you that you're not quite ready to go take on, like we have up here, bunny hopping is a pretty good way to deal with them. I would really like to see some keys because we've got a lot of golden chests on the screen. Oh, I died. I wasn't watching my health. And I I know I was just standing on spikes there, but I wanted to open that chest. <laughs> so I was just kind of like, ah, I'll be okay. That's okay. Did we lose any money? I oh, lost a little bit of money. Um, do I want to sell anything or do I want to just run back down there? How is... Yeah, let's, let's sell, I don't quite know what I don't need, but I don't think I need the rotted fork. Yep, you can have that. Also have hunter potions. I never really use hunter potions or gills potions or rope. I wish I had a couple more keys on me. Oh, and I can sell this water bolt. I always do that. I always like put my money away and then I'm like, oh, one more thing to sell. And then here where we're putting like doors and stuff. I actually also put, uh, I like carrying around blue candles later on in the game, but right now we're not at the point where we really want more enemies on the screen. Let's hang up this lamp. There we go. Get some extra light. Okay. Uh, sorry that the dungeon is so far away from where we are. I could like add like a little cut to get there, but that's okay. Fly back there. Put on the mini map so we can familiarize ourselves with the train. So, as you can see, like, if you're a magic user, you pick up a ton of stuff in the dungeon that is great, like, right away. But if you're not focused on magic, um, I guess you get one of the ingredients for Knight's Edge, which we can make really easily right now if we wanted to. Oh, I mean, we'd need to go to another area, but it's an area we could handle. So really like ranged characters, I, which is kind of what I want to be. The only thing they really get from the uh, dungeon is enough gold to go by mini shark, which is not even as exciting as I really remembered it being. I wonder if Mini Shark got a little bit of, an, of a nerf. So I remember it being like a very powerful gun. It's still like really fast, but I thought it was. I thought it did more than six damage. I guess I've I've always had a Mini Shark with a pretty good modifier, and this is the first one I've had with no modifier. I think we've gotten a little, just a hair unlucky with modifiers. And this time we'll just watch, we'll watch our health a little bit more carefully. We're, we are totally like fine to be in this area, but we just need to watch our health. I hope there's enough light for people to see. Let's 
Let our mana regen. And carry on a torch for a little while. This is a strange dungeon layout. Like this is a huge, huge amount of just like running, <laughs> running through like a straight down path and then you have to go back up. And I keep running into the walls. I'm gonna go ahead and heal. And use my gun, cause I'm out of mana. This game gives you so many cool toys with like magic weapons that it's almost hard not to be a caster, even if you're not trying to play as one. Uh, yep. Though I do, I feel like the, the mini shark is a nice amount of knockback. It just gives it, it has got a nice satisfying feel to it. Uh, I should try not jumping on spikes because the spikes are actually, what is that? Oh, okay, I've seen them before. Uh, I think the last time, like, I've only seen them on. So I, th I thought it was like a... It is a pretty rare light source, but... And it doesn't do anything, just cosmetically. It's a rare light source. But... Uh, yeah, I am taking some damage. I'm going to go grab... Lots of healing potion. I'm going to drink it. Right on the spot. Very refreshing. Okay, so we should be nearing some of those chests that we couldn't open. It should be like right around here-ish. Let's hit this guy in the face. Get his drops. Yeah, sometimes sometimes when I'm playing Terraria, I'll get a little bit lazy and I'll start just like tanking everything. And that's not really what you want to be doing in like a... In like a brand new dungeon. Yeah, let's open you. Uh, Celestial. I th think. Oh, Magic Missile. Magic Missile's cool. Uh, let's, let, maybe I shouldn't be using it right now, but it's a weird weapon. I'll show, I'll show it off when we're not like surrounded by enemies. Yeah, I guess there's a lot of stuff down down in the dungeon, but it's just like, I kind of knew going in that we weren't trying to be a magic user and that a lot of it wouldn't be really for us. So I think it was down, was it like down here that we, oh my God, so many enemies. You know, I'm going to go knock that blue candle out because I don't, not in quite, a, not in a blue candle mood. So I'll take the dart trap out, even though dart traps are pretty inconsequential. We still have a blue candle active. I don't know where it is though. All right. So this time I'm going to be a little bit smarter about this and I'm just going to show that you can, it takes forever to mine the spikes when you're low level or not low level, when you have a crappy pickaxe like I do. So I'm gonna shoot that guy. Oh, come on enemies. Yeah, this is this is what I was thinking that that would have is, I've got enough health that I can just run through that. And run over the spikes again. Okay, so there was another, um, Locked chest, like right here. Keen blue moon is a pretty good. It's, an, I mean, it's not like a good weapon, but it's, it's a weapon we can show off. Let's put it where our sword is. So the blue moon. It's just like a big. Uh, Th 
There's that other water candle that was causing us problems. It's just like a big flail, and I guess the thing I didn't realize about flails is that you can leave them out to just have them like, to have them kind of like ambiently be behind you when you're not doing anything. But that's like actually totally terrible because why would you, That, like if you if you want to use a active weapon, then you can't do that. Um, in the dungeon, it's kind of important to remember like what you've been collecting, because like things that stack, like you can't collect it, go in here and collect everything at once. But you know you can, like if you're collecting things that stack, then then go get what you need, you know. Like, don't worry about picking something up if you've already picked up one because it'll not matter for your inventory purposes. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna worry a little bit right now. I mean, like this is a, this is not as hard as the the dungeon, despite being the dungeon, is not as hard as the jungle. Like it is like we're fine. We just need to be a little careful and not take too much damage. Hop. And these guys will always fire three, I think. One. Where's the other one? Hmm. I guess the enemies live to disprove me today. My water bolt's better than yours. I actually don't know if that's true. I would assume it is, because we're the player. And the player should always be the coolest person in the room. That's a Sid Meierism, not like me trying to be like, oh, I'm cool. Game design maxim. So we're taking a lot of damage. That's OK. Let's see if the. I don't like it when enemies just like kind of hover around your outside your vision and they're like, hey, we're here. We're not going to do anything for a while. There we go. Now, the nice thing about this blue moon is that we are we are seriously in in knockback town. All right, let's pour it out of here. Hang up an oil oil rag sconce over there. Okay, so now it's time. Now the spikes are pretty terrible because they. In fact, we're just gonna. I don't think you can, can you even sell them? Can I sell you spikes? Nope. Sell you dart traps for a lot. Oh yeah, the magic missile, I wanna shut this off now. This follows your cursor and it's super cool because you can like take it around through things. It'll stay on until you throw it at something. And if you, if you release, it'll just go in the, direction that you release. The, the problem with the magic missile is, um, I guess there's no problem with it. We can try it out. It's certainly a weapon I haven't used much, but I, rem I remember not being too happy with the speed of it or something in a previous character, like when I got it. I think, it, I think on the character where I got it and wasn't happy with it, I already had the diamond staff. So that was a reason to be less than less than enthusiastic about it. So I'm not just doing painful inventory management on the on the screen right now. I actually do I'm looking for something. Okay, we're set. 
I'm going to make something kind of cool that I haven't used before ever, which is, you know, saying a lot because, I, like I said, I've played through four or five characters. I'm going to make Necro Armor. Necro Armor is a range-specific armor. It is, like, the last range-specific armor you get for a while. And we needed, we needed 150 bones for that. So that was like the secret thing I was collecting while I was down in the, in the jungle. Uh, not telling you guys about. Uh, but now we have a full set of Necro Armor. It gives us 5% range damage. So if you look at this uh, Crimson set, we're getting 2% increased damage. That's 6 damage for everything. For our magic, for our guns, everything. But this is going to be 15 for our gun. Or, or bows or anything we use like that. So that's kind of cool. So I say we take it it's gonna it's in a, it's worth sixteen defense, whereas this is nineteen. So we're gonna be losing uh three defense. It's gonna equate to one damage reduction at the moment because of what we've got on. We're gonna lose our very cool set bonus of health regeneration out of combat. But we gain is a twenty percent chance to not use ammo. And I don't really care about that stuff. I'm kind of Mr. Moneybags when it comes to ammo. Uh, but, but hey, you know, like that's, we will, oh, Blood Moon, really? You know, it would have kept us from running out of ammo in that Skeletron fight, which would have been something. Okay, I know this isn't the ammo chest, but I'm just going to quickly, my Crimson Gear here. And... Go to this guy. I'm gonna buy. I can buy silver bullets right now. I guess because it's a blood moon. Wow, they were expensive. I did not expect them to be that expensive. Um. Guess I'll sell some water walking potions. Buy a few more. So, don't really want to sell anything else. I guess that's what we have for right now is uh, like 300 something silver bullets. But, yeah, that's some more ammo and now we can open up our door, test out our guns and stuff. Yeah, this is tearing through everything now. Maybe it's just like, yeah, the mini shark well, it's doing one more damage, I guess, but it's that feels really good. I feel pretty happy about about that right now. Yeah, I've never used this armor. It's kind of cool looking. I don't really have like a any reason to use it, but hey. So one thing we can do to prevent. So during a Blood Moon, enemies can break down doors, but if you put a magic missile, yeah, magic missile is a little bit hard to aim with. That's why I like the Aqua Scepter. I like weapons where you can just like, you know, you can just create a wave of terror rather than having to anticipate where the enemy is going to be. But. Yeah, blood moons. Blood moons are, are good because we get more lenses for suspicious looking eyes. And lenses are lenses are not something we I mean we don't really need to get a bunch of suspicious looking eyes, but we might as well. And we could use a blue candle to like really increase the amount of stuff we get. But meh. Just run around. And now there's like no enemies on the screen. I don't understand. I thought we were, okay, here they are. That was still, there's surprisingly few enemies for a Blood Moon, in my opinion. I like this weapon okay. I'm kinda surprised. There's gonna be a better version of it, um, at least I think it's a better version when we, when we go to hell, but play around with, with this one for, for the time being. It's actually got a lot more range than I thought it had. 
it's really I mean I'm terrible with aiming at it with it but that's fine <laughs> not fighting enemies that are any challenge this is one of the nice things about progressing in Ferrari is you you reach points where like certain enemies aren't a challenge and it's kind of nice to just be able to like destroy certain enemies hopefully we're, we're gonna get an event soon um where it'll be like kind of like a blood moon but with goblins and when we get that i'm really i'm thinking that we'll just be like ready so it should be fun to to just kind of to just be like really overpowered for that if you saw down there there was a zombie with a top hat those, those guys have like a lot of extra health and they drop a top hat that I think sells for like 20 silver so that's kind of cool. You could also wear it but I didn't, I'm not one for like I don't really like to run through Traria with like uh, you know I want to I wear armor. I think that their armor looks pretty cool and I, I usually like sometimes I'll wear cosmetic armor over my armor but um, like I, I basically I want to have armor on me. Yeah, pretty easy blood moon. I think we're getting like a couple lenses, but not. Not enough to get too excited yet. And you'll notice how fast that Aqua Scepter eats through our mana. We use it for like a little bit and it's gone. It, it's really nice for when you absolutely need to hit an enemy. There's a Black Lens. Black Lenses are used for crafting sunglasses. And I forget if those actually do anything or if they're just a vanity item. I think the Black Lens is used for something that's not a vanity item, but I. I can't remember. I can't remember what it is or why. Yeah, get off my backs, enemies. One thing that's really nice is when you when you have enough enemies on screen that you can hit critical mass in terms of them dropping mana stars and you using mana. This weapon this weapon just uses a little bit too much mana for that to be possible. But I'm gonna get really lucky with star drops, I guess. You guys, I want your lenses. Regular regular lenses, please, not black lenses. Um, I don't think you dropped any. I'm running out of things to say during this blood moon because I'm just kind of I'm just kind of fighting on autopilot. <laughs> you know, these guys are pretty easy. I'd love to have a goblin invasion uh, soon so that I can get the NPC that you have a chance to get after it. The alchemy guy I was talking about. You notice our water has changed to red for the blood moon. That's kind of cool. So I'm thinking that before before I go fight the wall of flesh and kill it, I actually want to search for four more hearts because I'd like to have 200 or I'd like to have 400 health before I initiate hard mode because we're not going to want to go we're not going to want to go into like the second level deepness of jungle or like down to hell with hard mode enemies starting. I mean, hell is a bad example because hell is actually one of the safest and easiest places to be in hard mode. But you get you know what I mean? Like we're not going to want to go into unexplored deep caves looking for hearts when we have hard mode enemies going on. The game is going to if you think things have been difficult so far, the I am going to start dying like crazy when we get into hard mode.
All right, looks like the Blood Moon's kind of kind of wrapping up. We can check our handy dandy watch. And yes, yeah, I think the Blood Moon ends at 4.30. So it's coming along. I think we're going to wrap up the episode here. We're gonna, I'm going to come back and maybe build some houses after the Blood Moon, but I think this might be a good point to... Oh, hey, a goblin army's approaching. That's exactly what we want, and that's what we'll start the next episode with.